Puss in Boots There was a miller who left no more estate to the three sons he had than his mill, his donkey, and his cat. The partition was soon made. Neither the scrivener nor attorney were sent for. They would soon have eaten up all the poor patrimony. The eldest had the mill, the second the donkey, and the youngest nothing but the cat. The poor young fellow was quite comfortless at having so poor a lot. My brothers, he said, may get their living handsomely enough by joining their stocks together, but for my part, when I have eaten up my cat and made me a muff of his skin, I will die with hunger. The cat, who heard all of this but made as if he did not, said to him with a grave and serious air, Do not thus afflict yourself, my good master. You have only to give me a bag and get me a pair of boots made that I may scamper through the dirt and brambles and you shall see that you have not so bad a portion of me as you imagine. Though the cat's master did not build very much on what he said, he had, however, seen him play a great many cunning tricks to catch rats and mice, as when he used to hang by his heels or hide himself in the meal and make as if he were dead, so that he did not altogether despair of his affording him some help in his miserable condition. When the cat had what he asked for, he booted himself very gallantly, and pulling his bag about his neck, he held the strings of it in his two forepaws, and went into a warren where there was a great abundance of rabbits. He put bran and sow thistle into his bag, and stretched himself out at length as if he were dead. He waited for some young rabbit, not yet acquainted with the deceits of the world, to come and rummage in his bag for what he had put into it. Scarce was he lain down, but he had what he wanted. A rash and foolish young rabbit jumped into his bag, and Monsieur Puss, immediately drawing close the strings, took and killed him without pity. Proud of his prey, He went with it to the palace and asked to speak with his majesty. He was shown upstairs into the king's apartment and making a low reverence said to him, I have brought you, sir, a rabbit of the warren which my noble lord the Marquis of Carabas, for that was the title which Puss was pleased to give his master, has commanded me to present to your majesty from him. Tell thy master, said the king, that I thank him and that he does me a great deal of pleasure. Another time he went and hid himself among some standing corn, holding still his bag open, and when a brace of partridges ran into it, he drew the strings and so caught them both. He went and made a present of these to the king, as he had done before with the rabbit he took from the warren. The king in like manner received the partridges with great pleasure, and ordered him some money to drink. The cat continued for two or three months thus, to carry his majesty from time to time, game of his master's taking. One day in particular, when he knew for certain that the king was to take the air along the riverside with his daughter, the most beautiful princess in the world, he said to his master, If you will follow my advice, your fortune is made. You have nothing else to do, but go and wash yourself in the river, in that part that I shall show you, and leave the rest to me. The Marquis of Carabas did what the cat advised him to do, without knowing why. While he was washing, the king passed by, and the cat began to cry out as loud as he could, Help! Help! My Lord Marquis of Carabas is drowning! At this noise, The king put his head out of the coach window, and finding it was the cat who had so often brought him such good game, he commanded his guards to run immediately to the assistance of his lordship, the Marquis of Carabas. While they were drawing the poor Marquis out of the river, the cat came upon the coach and told the king that while his master was washing, there came by some rogues who went off with his master's clothes, although he had cried out, thieves, thieves, several times as loud as he could. However, the cunning cat had hidden the clothes under a great stone. The king immediately commanded the officers of his wardrobe to run and fetch one of his best suits 
for the Lord Marquis of Carabas. The king received him with great kindness, and as the fine clothes he had given him extremely set off his good mien, for he was well made and very handsome, the king's daughter took a secret inclination to him, and the Marquis of Carabas had no sooner cast her two or three respectful and somewhat tender glances that she fell in love with him. The king invited him into his coach to take part in their journey. The cat, quite overjoyed to see his project beginning to succeed, marched on ahead and meeting with some countrymen who were mowing a meadow, he said to them, Good people, you who are mowing, if you do not tell the king that the meadow you mow belongs to my lord Marquis of Carabas, you shall be chopped as small as mincemeat. The king did not fail asking of the mowers to whom the meadow they were mowing belonged. To my lord Marquis of Carabas, answered they all together, for the cat's threats had made them terribly afraid. Truly a fine estate, said the king to the Marquis of Carabas. You see, sir, said the Marquis, this is a meadow which never fails to yield a plentiful harvest every year. Puss in Boots, who still went on ahead, met with some reapers and said to them, Good people, you who are reaping, if you do not tell the king that all this corn belongs to the Marquis of Carabas, you shall be chopped as small as mincemeat. The king, who passed by a moment later, asked to whom all the corn belonged. To my lord Marquis of Carabas, replied the reapers, and the king again congratulated the Marquis. Puss in Boots, who always went ahead, said the same words to all he met, and the king was astonished at the vast estates of our lord Marquis of Carabas. Monsieur Puss came at last to a stately castle, the master of which was an ogre, the richest that had ever been known, for all the lands which the king had gone through belonged to this castle. The cat, who had taken care to inform himself who this ogre was and what he could do, asked to speak to him, saying he could not pass so near his castle without having the honour of paying his respects. The ogre received him as civilly as an ogre could do and asked him to sit down. I have been assured, said the cat, that you have the gift of being able to change yourself into all sorts of creatures if you have a mind to. You can, for example, transform yourself into a lion or an elephant. This is true, answered the ogre very briskly, and to convince you, you shall see me now become a lion. Puss was so sadly terrified at the sight of a lion so near to him that he immediately got in the gutter, not without abundance of trouble and danger because of his boots, which were ill-suited for walking upon the tiles. A little while after, when Puss saw that the ogre had resumed his natural form, he came down and owned up that he had been very much frightened. "'I have been moreover informed,' said the cat, "'but I know not how to believe it, that you also have the power to take on the shape of the smallest of animals, for example, to change yourself into a rat or mouse, but I must confess I find this to be impossible. Impossible, cried the ogre. You shall see that presently, and at the same time changed into a mouse and began to run around the floor. Puss no sooner perceived this, but he fell upon him and ate him. Up. Meanwhile, the king who saw as he passed the fine castle of the ogres had a mind to go in. Puss, who heard the noise of his majesty's coach running over the drawbridge, ran out and said to the king, Your majesty is welcome to this castle of my lord Marquis of Carabas. What? My lord Marquis? cried the king. And does this castle also belong to you? There can be nothing finer than this court and all the stately buildings which surround it. Let us go into it, if you please. The Marquis gave his hand to the princess and followed the king who went up first. They passed into a spacious hall 
where they found a magnificent feast which the ogre had prepared for his friends who were that very day to visit him but dared not enter knowing the king was there. His majesty was perfectly charmed with the good qualities of our lord Marquis of Carabas as was his daughter who has fallen violently in love with him and seeing the vast estate he possessed the king said after having a drink or two it will be owing to yourself only my lord marquis if you are not my son-in-law the marquis making several low bows accepted the honour which his majesty conferred upon him and forthwith that very same day married the princess puss became a great lord and never ran after mice any more but only for his diversion <laughs>